going to tell you a secret. Fiction and dreams can come true. Powered by the dark energies leaking from beyond. I'm Alan Wake, a writer, a creator. Something horrible is coming. He's called Mr. Scratch. Under these peculiar, exceptional circumstances, any story, any urban legend, any lie can come true. Right on cue, bubbling to the surface from untold depths, the horrors come. The emerging monsters do not expect the warm reception that has already been prepared for them. What's going on everybody, and welcome to part 16 of my playthrough for Alan Wake American Nightmare. So in the last episode, we fell into Mr. Scratch's trap for the second time. We, uh, we're pretty bummed, but we're getting closer. The narrator guy up in... God knows where is telling us we're getting closer each and every little time. Just a little bit more to the puzzle, you know what I'm saying? So we, we're not discouraged yet. And we... Wait, can I check this right now? The wheel was in place. Do I have everything? I don't have everything yet. I gotta go back and collect it, right? Yeah, we've done this before, alright? We, like, we're, we're getting this down. It's like, it's, it feels like I've done this before, right? Something like that? Yeah, so it's kind of... I, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. And I... Now I'm mostly convinced that I'm doing it the right way, like, no matter how you did it, no matter how many pages you actually collected during that time, you're gonna have to come through this again anyways. Like, that's just how the game plays out, you know what I mean? It's not like you actually did something wrong, or you could get infinitely looped in the game until you figure out what you're doing wrong. So I'm pretty sure I'm not, you know, messing up a bridge, that's how it goes. So in that sense, I feel a little bit more, uh, reassured about what I'm doing. I can definitely see a manuscript page there. These are just all over the place now, huh? Or we're definitely gonna hit enough to get that stuff, though, next time around. Let's check it out. My best friend. I don't make friends easily. I know plenty of people, but I don't let most of them close. I've known Barry Wheeler ever since we were little boys. We had the time of our lives. I'd get us in trouble, and he'd talk us out of it. Things haven't changed that much now that we're grown-ups. He's the most loyal and dependable person I've ever met, and all the things that count anyway. You could call him a weasel, and you wouldn't be entirely wrong. You could call him a clown, and I would reluctantly agree. But he has never let me down. That's, you know, that's that's what I'm talking about. Like, that guy was awesome. That is like, he's one of the coolest video game characters. I mean, Alan's pretty cool, but Barry is like a perfect, uh, they really are like perfect friends. Like, you kind of wouldn't think a guy like Alan and a guy like Barry would get together, but they are They're like perfect friends. That's, that's always something I always liked about friendship in video games and movies and books like you could it could be the most unlikely pair of people and they can still be friends and i i without giving you like a deep meaningful sentimental speech friendship is a very very powerful thing i think it's right up there with like love but you know let's uh let's go back to manly things like guns and flashlights yeah um you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna hold on to the assault rifle right now because it's just better overall uh, oh, right, back here again, so... Wake? Is, is that you? I set everything up for you at the oil field. Thanks. Just checking on you. Oh, okay, so, so she already did everything. Wow! Okay, she's my favorite. She is, she's my new favorite girl. <laughs> uh, already, everything already set up for us. That's, can you believe that? I feel bad for her, though, because she's obviously scared. That's too bad. Uh, oh, and another master page. Dibs. I could actually let's check when this, when I when I pick this up it's gonna show me how many I have. Yeah, thirty two out of fifty three. We could feasibly collect all of them. Emma and Mr. Scratch. Emma wasn't sure exactly when the man arrived at the motel, but from what she could tell, the party started almost immediately. It was infectious, spreading from one room to another. He was mercurial, almost as if he was flickering through the scene, telling a joke here, throwing an insult there, oozing sex and violence and excitement. She had never seen someone like this before. He looked at her and smiled, and she felt her heart flutter a little. She knew he was the kind of man mothers warn their daughters about, but she told herself it didn't matter. Yep. Stupid women's. Going with those crazy killer type guys. What is that? Any women in the audience, what is it about the, uh, the bad guys, like the killer types that you can obviously tell probably like kill people? when they're not doing their daily jobs at McDonald's. Like, what is it about those guys that turn you on? Is it, is it like the thrill of it? Just, you know, women in the audience. I know you're out there, even if you're reluctant. 
Uh, manuscript page. We gotta go for that. I probably, there's, like, I bet if I went out to the cave again now, there'd be a manuscript page out there, but I'm just not gonna go look all the way out there. This, this, I, you know, I didn't set out, with most of the games I end up playing, I usually don't set out with the intention of getting 100%, you know what I mean, in any game. There are a couple games I'll sometimes do where I, I do want to get 100% because it's fun, it's worth it. But a lot of games, for the most part, that's not how I play. Ooh, yeah, I like to play like that. Doing risky things. <laughs> risky things that I have, that are no reason to do them other than the fact that they're risky and look awesome. This one was going blue, that was kind of interesting. The giant. I have seen the darkness twist flesh into new shapes before. But encountering these giants is an extremely disturbing experience. It's as if the genre has been switched on me. There's something out of Pulp Fiction. Twice as tall as normal men and stronger than forklifts, their lumbering gait and slow-witted demeanor brings to mind some kind of mean-spirited caricature of a feeble-minded hillbilly. Yeah, those guys are pretty awesome. It's like, you know, there are plenty of games that have had enemies, like just Resident Evil is one you can definitely think of that was very iconic with an enemy that had a chainsaw, you know what I mean? It's like a big, slow guy with a chainsaw, but you can't let him get near you. Well, this guy kind of, it kind of doesn't have a chainsaw. He has more like a saw blade, like something you'd use to cut trees. I mean, just what you do with a chainsaw, but it's like a saw blade, you know. I, I don't really know exactly what it's called, but it looks a little different, so I like, I like the originality, not just giving the guy like a regular chainsaw. Well, art lovers, are you feeling neglected? You shouldn't. You know Eddie Rodman's got love for you, which is why I actually hauled myself out of bed before noon, just so I could record an interview for your pleasure. Enjoy. Now, as I'm sure you all know, the annual Night Springs Visual Art Show is coming around again, and that's a big deal for all of us that are in the culture business. If you can call it a business, that's a little controversial, I know. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Money makes the world go around, no doubt about it. <laughs> and that's one of my guests here at the studio, Serena Valdivia. She is a curator at the Night Springs Gallery of Visual Arts, and she's in charge of the NSVA Film Festival, held this year at the old Night Springs Drive-In Theater. Hello, Eddie. It's great to be here. And let me just say that it's a wonderful venue. Absolutely. And Wither is one of the filmmakers, somebody who's actually primarily known as a renowned photographer, Alice Wake. Hello. Now, Alice, I've seen a lot of your work over the years. It's very impressive. Uh, my wife's a big fan, actually. Oh, thank you. You've uh, you've gained quite a bit of fame as a photographer, but that's not why you're here, right? You actually have a film. That's a little surprising. For me, too. I really wouldn't be here at all if it weren't for Serena. Uh, you two are friends, I take it? Yeah, we move in the same circles. So, about a year ago, I heard about all this footage she'd shot, and I got to see some of it, and then I started pestering her about actually putting it out there, because it was really good. I didn't really want to show it. It felt too personal. Well, yes, I can understand that. It, it, uh, it features your husband, and he's, um, well... Uh, he's... he's dead. Uh, I, I thought he was missing. It's been two years. I... this sounds awful, but yes, I believe he's dead. Otherwise, he would have... well, you know. Yeah, I, I understand. Well, hold that thought, and uh, we'll be right back. Oh, that, that hurts right here right here when your wife thinks you I mean even if I lost someone like you know two years yeah they tell you you know logic above everything else if you just use logic and common sense like yeah that person's probably dead but you know what that's not the way I look at something like if I like something like that happened to me I'd be like no they're they're still out there somewhere that's that's how I look at it just because if you give up hope in anything then it's it's no different than quitting you're giving up it's I no it's you know what I mean it's not, I just don't, you can't give into that crap. But, so that's cool how they know each other. And what was her name? Serena? I like that name. Like, her whole name, Serena Valdez or something? It's, it's a very cool name, I dig it. I dig the name. She, do you think she'll talk to us? I, I know we kind of, like, get you possessed by the darkness, like, eaten up alive, but it's not intentional, I promise. Alright, before I go anywhere else, this TV was on. And I'm sure we want to watch the the Daily Mr. Show, right? Third one wants to watch. My favorite show. Dig this show. So I've been thinking about Barry. I don't know what to do about him yet. I mean, I'm not going to keep him around, that's for sure. Al. Al! Ugh, little parasite. Your best friend. Really. That's the best you can do.
I actually kind of like the guy. He's a plucky little butterball. He plays the clown. That's a hard road to take. <laughs> but I don't need him sticking his fat face in my business. <sighs> Did you know he's been hanging out with the sheriff? From that shitty little town? They keep in touch. Barry's about the only guy who insists that you're not dead. How about that? <sighs> I might keep him alive for a while. <laughs> Just to see him go to pieces when I fire his ass. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, hell no. You don't fuck with Barry. It's like you don't screw with our wife. You don't fuck with Barry. No way, man. Isn't that fitting how Barry's the only guy who's like, no, he's Al's definitely alive. And they're like, uh, he's been missed for two years. No, he's alive. He's out there. He's probably in some like crazy fictional world. He'll get out eventually. He's got faith in us. He's the only person who's got faith in us. I kind of forgot about the sheriff in the first game. She was like the only person who actually believed you in the first place for all the crazy stuff. Man, another manuscript page. They're, they're, I think they're just throwing them in front of us now. Old guards in the studio. Getting the Andersons into the recording studio was a struggle and a half. But once they actually picked up the instruments, something happened. They were two old men, and they weren't. They were doddering bags of bone, and they were barely contained power. And there was music. Barry rubbed his hands together. He knew how to pick a winner. Now all they needed was some direction on how to make things a little more modern. Barry had never produced a thing in his life, but he knew what he liked. He knew Balance Slays the Demon was going to be a hit. <laughs> so I kind of like it when I think about the, uh, the two guys from Alan Wake 1, which, you know, I'm going to just assume you've watched, that those two guys, the Anderson brothers, who were the old gods of Asgard, are like the way that we're a writer and we have the power to change reality, I think the fact, it's like you have to do it through an art form, I think it's kind of the way it works. So the fact that they play music is how they fought the darkness. They fought it with music. We fight it with writing, and they fought it with uh, music. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? So when they get back on stage, like they can just, they're suddenly like playing really well again, regardless of how old they are, you know what I mean? So I thought that was pretty cool. Flares are always welcome. Uh, I'm just going to search around the area now, because I, I have this feeling that um, this is probably going to be our last time here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know if you actually do have to collect all the manuscript pages, or if it's a detailed thing where you're going to have to come through here, you know, a couple times. We haven't really explored much, and I just got that feeling, you know what I mean? So let's let's take a little look around. Why not? Before we, we know what we're going to do, right? I mean, everything's all set up for us. We're just going to blow up the oil tower again. Ah, blowing stuff up just never gets old, does it? You just got to keep doing it. Uh, I wonder how far the train tracks go. I wonder how far we can go in general, honestly. Let's find out. It'll be fun. It'll be like an adventure together. I wonder if we're going to run out of sprint. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. No, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, no, we're running out of sprint. Oh, we're tired. Oh, switch to my nail gun. Save ammo for that, for something important. Though I... Oh, fuck! Holy crap, he's got a bat. Man, I felt like they took a lot of light to kill that guy. Or I get the darkness shield off him. What would you call Like a shell? Is that the word Alan used? Like a shell around them? It, it's something like that. Does the train track really just end here? That's odd. Okay, we cool? We cool darkness? Let's let's wonder. I, this is probably going to like cut me off in the invisible wall like it did at the observatory. But hey, you know what? We, uh... Oh yeah, look at this. This is spooky. Oh, okay, yep, nope. Yeah, it, it almost makes sense, too. Like, in most video games, you'd be like, Invisible Wall, what? That's not real. That doesn't make any sense. But in this game, you could actually say it makes sense just because of the fact that we're in, like... We're in Night Springs, I mean, we're in, like, a fictional world created by the darkness. We're kind of, like, in a... It's it's all very timey-wimey, wibbly-wobbly, <laughs> if you get the reference. But it uh, I'm sure it makes sense in some way or form or shape. Uh Die. Thank you. Anybody else? Oh. 
Yeah. They usually come in packs. Oh, I was going to say, like, not just, like, one or two. They usually come in, like, three or four. Jesus Christ, man. Uh-oh. Recharge battery. Huh. And just like that, his whole life was over. By me, Alan Wake, a writer. Can we go in here? Nope. I'm just checking around. I'm probably going to find a single thing out here, but you know what? I'm not in any rush. I do. I get the feeling that we might be in our last time round. Because, you know, I, I, I just like that saying, third time's a charm. Usually is pretty right. I, I bet we can't go far that way. And I bet they aren't, like, hiding any manuscript pages. It seems like they want us to find most of them, you know what I mean? In Alan Wake 1, they were, they were like, a collectible, but they were also part of the story, which I didn't realize until way late in the game, which I feel bad about. And next time I play through it, I'm definitely going to go through and read those. Because they'd probably fill in a lot of story gaps. And I like I like how they do it with the system, with the uh, how it makes sense with the manuscript page, and it's a way to, like, convey parts of the story that you can't, like really fit in any other parts. Like, sometimes you need, you need the player to, like, read things to grasp, like, background story, like, oh, this character is here because... That reason. Okay, where are the other two guys? Yep, see, told you. They're, they're sneaky bastards. Yeah. Man, I wish we could drive this car. That was, like, one of the most fun things about Alan Wake that I know they took out for time and the fact that, like I was saying before, this isn't a disc game. This is, like, a download, so it's it only has so much space total. And it's not meant to be like a full blown game. So they gotta work with this space. That's why doing things like this, like repeating the area again and again, save them disk space as like a place to program things. And they're allowed and then they can like rechange the area so it's not like we're playing the exact same thing over and over. It's the same area, but we're doing it differently, so it, it saves I think it saves like, you know, space on the well, it's not a disc now, it's like just the programming for the code of the game, something like that. I don't know. I don't know how that all the digital stuff works. And I might be talking like I know a lot, but honest to God, I really don't. Hey, see? Sometimes, sometimes looking around pays off. Who? Yeah, see that? <laughs> We're getting good at this. Emma Sloan. With all the herbs, crystals, and the rest of her New Age paraphernalia, Emma Sloan had been called a hippie and a freak and worse. It was that small-town mentality. She was a female mechanic, and even in 2011, there were always going to be backward shit-kickers who thought that was a hoot. She didn't mind. She could deal. She could take any engine apart, even the new ones with all the computers in them. Turned out that these boys were awful polite while waiting for her to put them back together. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't stand any of that stuff where people are like, oh, you're a female mechanic? Ho, 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 ho. That's so funny. Like, it's... No, that's... That's definitely... Whoa, look... What the fuck was that? Did you see that? Do you see me just, like, float on air for a second? How'd we do that, Alan? How did we do that? Look, <laughs> did you see him? Oh, man. But no, that is uh, that is definitely a, a trait that is really cool. Really cool thing. Like, definitely, definitely a turn-on. Cool. Awesome. Women have the potential to do everything. Everything. Except be daddies or something. Something like that. But, alright, let's check around here. Another manuscript page. Go for it. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-oh. Oh. Holy crap. No, no, no. Uh-oh, uh oh See, this this is not good. I'm like... Okay, now... Oh, did you see the nail on his head? Uh, that was... That's satisfying. Is that... No, it's just a pickup thing over there. But let's grab the manuscript page. Too many legs. The strands of webbing glistened in the beam of my flashlight. Fine, almost ethereal. They were fresh, and right in my path. I held my breath and waited, ear straining. Nothing. I moved on, concentrating on the task at hand. Just get what I was looking for, then leave. That's all I keep telling myself. For a moment, I actually thought it might be as simple as that. Then, I heard too many legs skittering across the ground. Uh, that'd be, uh, that'd be pretty freaky, huh? But, uh, you know, now we've actually been exploring a little bit, which I haven't really done much in this playthrough at all, even though it's it's not really a game to, like, do hardcore exploring in, but a little bit. And we've probably got most of the manuscript pages in this first area. I, I mean, as a full, overall, there can't be that many left here. So, for now, I think we're going to end things off right here, and the next episode we'll pick it back off and finish exploring, and then blow up the tower again. Because that's what we all wanted to do. So until then, I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.